In this video, I'm going to show how I made this uh, device. It's called a Rose. It's sold as a Rose Index. Um, the company that sells it calls it a Rose Index. I just made one for myself. And um, there's some a couple of websites that show how it's used uh, recently. Uh, Mr. Pete showed how to use one. But what it is, you can put a round tube into the vise, clamp this down, machine in operation, and then use a machine a square off the machine table. And you can rotate this either um, one sixth of the way on this hexagon or one eighth of the way on this octagon or a quarter of the way off the square. And then uh, you can just keep indexing it around and quick and quick and dirty way to grab something if you don't if you can't put it in a uh, 5c call it in an index plate and all that stuff um, what i did zoom in here a little bit more so i drilled and tapped i got a 3 8 16 bolt and machined a hole in the center of 3 16 with a carbide end mill on my lathe and then put an in brass insert in it so you don't mar the surface you're clamping this on i started with a two and a half inch block of aluminum that was an inch and a eighth inch and an eighth thick yeah inch and an eighth thick and i just used the wizards on uh, mach uh, 3 the newfangled solution wizards and what that uh allows you to do is um, come up with a couple different operations. So I just told it to make an octagon, make a hexagon. But when I did that, it left uh, little pillars on the corner. Um, I didn't go through and edit the code and get rid of that. I just cut those off with a hacksaw. So uh, it's just quick and dirty. Took about 10 minutes with the wizards. Uh, Newfangled Solutions Wizards, if I didn't say, and um, came up with the G code for this. I'm going to go ahead and post the G code on the mock support website. They have a section in there for posting G code if you want to download it. Just beware um, of those pillars. And it's made for my machine. I did it with a 3 8 inch end mill. And uh, if I do this again, I would have pre-drilled a hole, oh, one inch or something in the center of this. Because when I was machining out the inside of this, the first one, um, the chips get stuck in there. You need to either blast it out really strong with air, which makes a mess all over your shop, or use flood coolant, which, again, if you don't have an enclosed machine, it's kind of crappy. This was done on a CNC machine, by the way, uh, a knee type CNC machine. Um, so anyway, I'll go ahead and show you the video. Uh, the actual machining is not that exciting, but uh, I think it came out pretty good. I used coolant on part of it. You'll see in the video when I used coolant, it came out better than just blowing air on it. So there it is. Okay, I reset here. I set the part on parallels to get below this notch. I had cut this notch in top of my jaws, but there's too much of a radius in this uh, cut here and it allowed the uh, part to come up. Okay, let's try this again. Going on.
Okay, the program's all done. I just have to cut these uh, pillars off. I'll cut those off with my bandsaw and deburr it. We'll take a look, see what it looks like. All right, here's the finished product. Um, had a little bit of a chip, uh, recutting chip along there. Ended up using the vacuum to suck the chips out in addition to blowing air because I didn't want it to be recutting chips. Once it broke through the bottom, I didn't have to do that. And also, uh, I didn't have to vacuum as it went around the outside because uh, the chips would uh, just fly away. So now it just needs to get a uh, hole, threaded hole put in here and then a set screw. Okay, did a second one using coolant. Uh, it's really hard to film with coolant, so I didn't film it. But you can see the this one here is the one with the coolant and the finish inside looks a little better than this one. In fact, the finish all around looks better on the uh, coolant one. So on this 3 8 bolt, you know, because of the head, there's no way to get that in there. So what I had to do, turn it upside down, and see it in there, drop it inside, and then uh, come out. So I had to remove the collet for each bolt.